everyone. Welcome to the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast. My name is Lisa. I'm coming to you from Long Island, New York, and you can see it is nighttime right now. Guys, we are in the midst of a lot of April showers. So the little bit of good weather that we have had here, I have actually been stuck in the office and not able to enjoy it. So I don't usually podcast in the evening, but this is the time that I was able to find for this week. And I really wanted to sit down and chat with you guys a bit. So um, go grab a drink and, and settle in because I've got a lot to share with you guys. What I wanted to do for today's episode is a little bit different from the content that I normally produce here. I really wanted to chat with you guys about the current state of all of my whips and kind of talk to you guys about process versus product knitting. Like, are you a process knitter or are you a product knitter? Or does it depend on the circumstance? These are just some things that I have been thinking about recently as I've been working through my pretty long list of whips these past few months. So. Um, you guys may have seen at the end of 2021, I did a video where I rounded up all of my whips at that time. Some of them were more recently cast on, but a lot of them had been kind of not quite to UFO point, but not really receiving a lot of attention. So the purpose of that video was to just kind of look at everything that I had still in the works and to kind of reassess whether I wanted to frog it or if I wanted to finish it. And I did decide to finish pretty much everything. There is one project which I decided to frog and I actually still have to frog it. But I really, the things that are on the list, I really wanted to finish. I really wanted the finished products for those items. And so I made a plan and I wrote them all down and I have ever since been just working my way through all of those whips and I would not really let myself cast on anything new until April 1st. And I did just cast on a new project on April 1st. I'm not going to share that with you guys today, but because I'm not that far into it, I'm going to save that for the next podcast. So you do have something brand new to look forward to. But I wanted to kind of take note of what I have accomplished so far, how many things I have finished that were on my list, and kind of what is the status of the things that are still in whip status. Am I going to be working on them? Am I stalling out on them? That kind of thing. So let's see. I have a little bit of a journal. A little bit of a journal. I have a journal. It's not a little bit of a journal. It is a journal. And I kind of dabbling in bullet journaling a little bit. But one thing that I did when I made that video was I made a list of all of my whips and I've got a couple extra things here. Um, and then I had a, a space for finished and a space for frogged. My frogged box is not at all filled in because I just, I haven't frogged the one project yet. But so I think we're, we're at the three month point now. We are, we are now in April. So I've, I've had three months where I have been actively focusing on working my way through as many of my whips as I could. And so I wanted to update everybody on where I am and what my plans are for how actively I'm going to be finishing them or am I going to be starting new projects or a little bit of both? Because let's be honest, it is spring and I am itching to cast on so many spring things. So I just thought it's been three months. I've been a good girl, a good knitting girl, and I have accomplished a lot of things on this list. So um, go grab yourself a drink and let's talk about all of this stuff. I have, it's nighttime, so I've actually got a beer for tonight. Um, but whatever you guys want to drink, a coffee, a tea, water, a beer, whatever, Grab some knitting if you like, and I wanna show you guys all the things. 
But before we get into that, let me quickly tell you what I am wearing today. So the sweater I am wearing today is one of my favorites and I don't think I've actually worn it until today, this season. It got kind of buried in my drawer and I honestly forgot about it and I just never picked it up, but it is actually one of my favorite things. This is Elephant Promenade and it's a pattern by Annie Lupton of Boho Chic Fiber Co. And I did this as a test knit for her. A couple of years ago, three now maybe, I'll have to look at the date. But by the way, all of the project information um, I will have listed in a description box below this video. And there will also be links to my project pages on Ravelry if Ravelry is accessible to you. You can find them over there. My Ravelry is LisaJack78. And you can also find information about a lot of these projects on my Instagram, which is Lisa Westervelt Flute Studio. So those are places that you can find me other than here on YouTube. Um, yeah, so this I did as a test knit for Annie a few years ago, and I used all completely natural wool for this project. So there's nothing dyed in here. This is a Targi wool from Green Mountain Spinnery, and it's just an undyed natural wool color. And then the really dark brown is also Green Mountain Spinnery. Offhand, I don't remember, um, I don't remember which of their yarns it is, but that in information is on my Ravelry in my project page. Um, but it's definitely also a natural color and is not dyed at all. So I thought that this was a beautiful contrast. This is actually the only garment I have that is completely natural without any color in it. So yeah, it's it's super cute. Um, I'll see if I can put some photos of the entire sweater in since you're only getting the beautiful yoke in here. There's also um, some elephants at the bottom of the sweater there. So it is, it's very cute. It fits great. It's, it's one of the favorite things that I have made. And yeah, that's all I have to say about it. I think it was one of Annie's more popular designs. It got a lot of attention and a lot of people were knitting it. And she also has a, a short sleeved version of it as well. And I think that at the time she donated a lot of the pattern proceeds to um, a Save the Elephants program. So that was, that was really sweet. Okay, so yeah, let's get into this video. So I need a sip. A more casual episode today, you guys. Okay, so I determined that I had about, about a dozen, I think it worked out to 11 projects that I was in the middle of working on when the year came to an end, when 2021 came to an end. And most of them still needed quite a bit of work. None of them were super close to being finished or maybe only one of them was, but a lot of them were basically needed more than half of the project worked on. So these were, you know, a pretty significant list of unfinished projects. But I don't want to call them UFOs because the ones that I have that are UFOs are projects that really need to be frogged. And I have actually come across a few things in the in the process of packing up my stuff to move because we're moving in a couple of weeks into a new apartment. So I'm just kind of going through everything and I have found a few things that are designated for the frog pond. Um, and I knew that, I just, they, they were tucked away somewhere and the things for me that have become UFOs are either things from when I wasn't really yet a serious knitter or a serious garment knitter and maybe I started them and I, 
got kind of stuck because I didn't really know how to do the next part of a project and then they kind of sat for a while. That's not what anything is that I'm going to be talking about today. I think I will pull those things out before I frog them and show them to you guys. It's a small handful of things. It's not really very many. But what I'm talking about today are things that are actually whips, things that were going to get finished, but I just had gotten bogged down with so many projects. And speaking of test knitting for Annie and just test knitting in general, I also filming that last video made me realize that the reason that most of these projects weren't getting finished was because I kept agreeing to do test knits. And I was always really excited about the test knit that I was doing, but it was getting in the way, like having a project with a deadline was interfering with my ability to get really finished some of the things that I was working on and interested in finishing. And then the more test knits that I did, I would still start other projects and then things just started piling up. And I kind of reached the point of a little bit of overwhelm with the amount of unfinished projects that I had. So I spent the first three months of this year seeing how many of those I could tackle in like a three month period. And out of 11 projects, I have crossed off six things. But one of them has to kind of go back into the whip pile. So let's start by talking about all of the whips that I have finished since the start of 2022. Okay, so I'm looking at my little list of things that I finished and there are there are a few things on this list that um, are not going to be in today's video. One of them is a test knit that I had already agreed to do that was due at the end of January that I was committed to finishing before I said no more test knits. So that is on here. I'm not sharing that today. I also listed on here some socks that were started and finished since the filming of my last video. So anything like that that I have finished is not going to be in this video. This is just things that were actually talked about in my Lingering Whips Frog or Finish video. So let's look at the things that I have finished. The first thing on my list that I finished on January 15th was Shawlography. So let me dig that out right here. I'm not going to really go into detail because you guys watch my podcast. You've already seen all of these projects, but I just wanted to round them up again today so that I could actually see like physical evidence of all of the progress that I have made. I made a list because it feels really good for me to cross something off of a list, but it also feels really good to have a pile of things that I have finished since January to admire and, and show you guys. So we're going to do that. So Shallography was a more recent whip because this was Stephen West's make along, his mystery make along from October. So I think... The cast on date for this was October 8th, so it was not lingering for very long. I just did not finish this in the scope of that knit along. Um, I got I got bogged down with stuff. I can't even re really remember what at this time, but I loved working on this so much and it was a joy to finish. Um, so if we're going to talk about product or process. I think the nature of this particular shawl, because it was a mystery knit along, I didn't know what the finished product was going to look like. So this one was really about the process of knitting along with a whole, like thousands probably, probably thousands of you knit this along with Stephen West and everybody from all over the world in the mystery knit along, right? And that was so much fun to be working on a different clue each week and getting to check in and see everybody's progress 
shots and watch everybody talk about theirs on their podcasts and post their pictures on Instagram and to just be doing it right along with everybody else. I think I got behind somewhere in the middle of Clue 2 because Clue 2 was like super, super long and I got most of it done, but but that's when, when things started falling behind. Um, and I don't quite remember right now if I had finished Clue 3 and had already started on Clue 4 by the time I filmed that video. But this border here, which was clue four, the last clue, took quite a long time to do. But actually, I really enjoyed that part of this because that was like my mindless knitting for, for those first few weeks of January. Like I was, I was happy to work on it and as glad as I was to have finished the shawl, I enjoyed working on that so much that I kind of missed having this to work on because this just kind of became my go-to thing. I didn't have to look at the pattern at that point. It was really, really easy to do, the border. And there was so much of it that I really just, I got in, I just got in a really good, comfortable place with it. And I could do it while I was watching TV. It was just something I could do it. I could do it with Owen playing near me and it didn't get distracted from the pattern at all. Um, also, I happen to love the finished product. And I have to say, this was my very first Stephen West pattern at all. And I wear this thing all the time. I bring this to my office and snuggle up in it all the time because my office is so cold. This shawl has gotten so much wear. I know that he has recently put out a blanket version of this. I don't know if I'll knit it because, oh my gosh, this took so long and the blanket is like, this is like a half circle, sort of. I think the blanket is a full on circle. The blanket is huge. I mean, this thing is pretty big to me. I just, I love this thing. So anyway, this was my first finished object of 2022, officially. It might have actually really been a pair of socks. I don't remember. I, I didn't write that down. But out of the things on the whips list, this was the first one that I finished. And I'm so glad that I finished it because I just, I use it constantly. Okay, so then the next thing that I finished, actually just two days later, so I must have finished it the same weekend, was my Noctua-Day sweater. This has been in a finished-ish stage for so long, and it's it's still in the ish. It, it's, it's not completely finished. So this one, this one kind of makes me sad to talk about. So this was another test knit that I have done. I have since finished all my test knits. I am currently, I have zero projects now that have a deadline and that feels amazing because I think that was the thing that I took out of the last video that I made was that I was getting to the point where having to knit on a deadline was really not something that I was enjoying anymore. So finally, I am in a place now where all of the knitting that I'm doing, I'm doing now on my own timeline. And I feel like that's, that's the first time in the history of this podcast that I can honestly say that. So that is something that feels like a big relief. And especially because I have so much more responsibility at my job now that I don't have the same amount of time to dedicate to my knitting that I did a few months ago. Um, so yeah, it just, it feels really good to not be knitting on a deadline. So this Noctua-Day sweater is a beast. It's a beautiful beast. This was a test knit that I did for Katherine Clark and she owns Brooklyn General in Brooklyn, New York. And I actually did an interview with her too after having finished this test knit for her and which was really fun. You guys should go watch that. Um, so let's talk about this because when I filmed the video, 
what I had left to do was the hem. The hem is, it's a folded hem and it's stitched up. And this, this first part of it is like a corrugated rib. And then the really cool part about this is the duplicate stitch. So that was what I still had left to do. I had not finished the hem because I had not just sat down and done the duplicate stitch, which says always seek the light. And it is really, really fun. It was really fun to do. And I was very proud of myself for finishing it finally. But, and I don't know if it's, it, it can't be the duplicate stitch. There's there's something that when when I finished off the hem and, and whip stitched it to the sweater, the shape of it created, I don't know if you guys can see, but it flares out quite a bit. And it just isn't sitting right on my hips. And it, it just, the way that it kind of clings to my hips around here, and then the hem part flares out. I was so frustrated that when it was finally finished that it didn't fit the way that I envisioned it. And I had worn it before. I had worn this without the hem being finished. So it was just, um, this wasn't stitched down. So it kind of jelly rolled up because it was stuck in that stitch. And, and I had worn it and I didn't notice any flaring or anything. So I still, I still have to deal with the hem because I don't like the way it looks and so I'm not gonna wear it. I'm at least not gonna wear it out of the house. And this is over a year since I started this in January, or was it like, I don't remember, I wanna say it was like, I can't remember if this was a November knit of like 2020 or if it was after the the first of the year I'm, I'm, I'm confused now but it's really frustrating so much work went into this beautiful sweater I can I can insert pictures because it's really hard to see I can't get the whole thing on camera but so much work went into it that it's so frustrating that I don't like the way that the hem sits so I still have to figure out what to do about it it just, it went in the naughty corner. Do you guys have a naughty corner for your knitting? I do now. This is the only thing in the naughty corner. And it's been sitting there ever since I finished this. So even though this is finished, I'm not happy with the fit. And I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with just taking out the whip stitch and see how it fits. Like, is it I'm gonna put it on again and maybe when I'm stitching it down with the whip stitch again, maybe I can pin it first and then maybe make some tucks in it or something so that it doesn't flare out. I really don't know, but I wanna be able to wear this sweater. And so it's this is still officially in the whip pile, but this is also a very heavy, full color work sweater and I'm not going to be working on this anytime soon. So it is going to go back to the naughty corner after I finish filming this video and I'm going to I'm going to leave it there until the fall. And I am then sometime in the fall I will I will figure out what to do about it. I do not want it to linger into 2023 that much I know but there's there's no reason that I don't feel I don't know I'm still mad at it so it's just it's gonna go sit in the naughty corner for a bit longer because we're heading into spring I don't feel any sense of urgency to deal with it right now so it, it, it is what it is it's it was kind of I was so excited to finish it and then I was so disappointed so yeah, I'm mad at that one still. Before I put this away, I forgot to talk about process or pr 
product knitting for this one. So this, when I saw this as a test knit and that Catherine put up a test knit call, I just, that's the back of it. I fell in love with the moths everywhere and I said, I really wanna make that. I just, I really loved the sweater. I loved the color work. I loved everything about it. And I just, I saw the sweater and I said, that is gorgeous. I just, I have to have that. The process of knitting this one was kind of not the most enjoyable because it was a massive amount of work. A lot of these butter, well, all of the moths are three color, color work. And it's just the way that the third color is spaced out, having to figure out the floats. And I don't know, it just, it took me a really long time to get into the rhythm of the three color knitting. I've since done a lot more of it. I've done other sweaters like the Ninilchik Swancho. There were a lot of rows in that that were three color knitting, but the nature of that color work pattern the three colors were used so frequently that, I don't know, I, I was more easily able to get into the, ryth the rhythm of knitting it. This one, like there are these big gaps, bigger gaps where there's no, no three colors at all. And I don't know, it just, I struggled with that for this one. And then it was, it was a pretty quick, deadline I want to say that we had maybe five weeks to do it which it was a huge project to do in a short amount of time um, and I did get it done on time except for finishing the hem which was okay um, I was I, I got I got through enough of it where I was able to wear it and get some nice photos and then the process of learning to do the duplicate stitch for some reason i don't know maybe i think that by the time the deadline came and i had pushed so hard to make the deadline even though all i had to do was the duplicate stitch for the hem i just it needed to be put down for a while and then i just i never picked it back up because i didn't feel that sense of urgency to finish the hem as I did to just get through all of that color work in the sweater. So I definitely lost my knitting mojo for the per this particular design after the test knit deadline had passed. Um, and then it just, I mean, it sat for so many months. And at that point, it was kind of ridiculous that I hadn't just sat down and done the hem because it was like a couple of, of evenings of work and then it was done, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So I felt like very proud of myself for finishing it, but then when it didn't fit the right way at the hem, I was very frustrated. So I would say that this was much more of a product knit. Like I really wanted the finished product and even though I enjoyed a lot of the process, there were things about the process with the deadline and struggling with the three color knitting that made it less enjoyable after that. You know how when you start a project and in the initial stages of working on a project, it's exciting and it's new and you're just really into it. But then the, the pressure to get it done on time kind of kind of got to me and I wanted to be working on other things too but I had to finish this so yeah I think I think this one was much more of a product than a process knit for me okay so that was not two a day and that is now going back in the naughty corner so that I can let it sit through a whole other summer before I figure out what on earth to do about the hem Okay, so let's talk about something happier. Okay, um, next, the next thing that I finished. Oh, okay. That was my spring thing shawl. So let me get that out. Right? Yeah. Okay, so.
So, after um, knocking out the rest of Shawlography, knocked two a day, I also had to finish a test knit sweater from start to finish that I'm not showing. And I have finished a couple pairs of socks. I wanted something really quick and simple. Again, it was just a final step that needed to be done. And that was my spring thing shawl and just putting on the cute, adorable little tassels. That honestly took maybe two hours. Um, you know, it's so cute. Th there were just other things. I don't remember why. I didn't finish it um yeah this this was was this I don't know if it was a product knit this was probably more of a process knit this one was I had this beautiful yarn in my stash and I originally bought it to make socks but then I decided I wanted to turn it into a shawl because I just liked the yarn so much so it wasn't necessarily the shawl itself but it was the yarn so i guess this one was the process of knitting this yarn and just finding the right thing to turn it into that motivated this particular shawl so i had actually reached out to my viewers for suggestions on shawl patterns that use just a single skein and you guys suggested this shawl and I'm so glad that you did because I really love it and I did wear it once and now I just need to kind of find the right thing to wear underneath it so that I can wear it this spring. I just don't have anything that's kind of a coordinating color because this, this yellow is pretty bright and the purple is pretty dark and I just really don't have anything that it's exactly working with. Maybe black. Maybe I have a black top that I can wear it with that is short sleeve or sleeveless. But yeah, I think that this is gonna be, I keep looking down, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, this is just one of those things where I, I worked on this a lot when we were driving down to Florida, I think, on one of our many trips to visit my mother-in-law and before she died. And um, this was really good car knitting. It was just really, I always need very simple projects to work on in the car. So this is garter stitch. And I got through a lot of it during those trips. And I think that there were just also other things that I was working on. And I just, there was a point with it where all I had to do was the border and it just wasn't at the forefront of, is that a right thing to say, the forefront? just wasn't on top of my mind to finish it and but I have it finished now and it's I, I love this so much so I'm really glad that I just followed through and finished it so that was an easy one like all of these are things that there was never any question that I was gonna frog them it was just like I needed a plan to get these done so I see I see three more projects in my finished pile I think the next thing yeah the next thing was the Bernie mittens these were a gift for my husband and I had one of them finished for Christmas and then still had one mitten to go so I had purchased the yarn this is all Green Mountain spinnery yarn mountain mohair it is gorgeous and it is amazing to work with this I had bought the yarn very soon after the inauguration when the Bernie meme became very popular I planned out um, everything all the colors that I wanted to use and I purchased it I even wound it up I got it all ready to go and then I think I just didn't start it right away I think I was working on the knock two a day and I was really busy with that sweater and so this just wasn't something that got started. And then the summer happened and, you know, these are very, very warm, very, very warm mittens. Um, so I just wasn't motivated to cast on super heavy mittens. I mean, these are lined with, they're not, it's not fleece, but it's like a, a boucle yarn. This is Wolfolk Flet, which is 
kind of fleecy boucle yarn so I mean it's a double layer plus all the color work super warm I'm getting hot wearing them now actually I've got my Bernie Mitten earrings on today I just realized so yeah I bought these earrings at the time right after that whole thing went blew up the internet and everything so cute um so I made one of these I finally cast these on a few weeks before Christmas sometime in December I got these going and these are for my husband these are my husband's he absolutely loves them but I only managed to get one of them done for Christmas so I still had the other one to go and so it was kind of my mission to get these done in time for him to wear during the winter because I didn't want them lingering past that I had like I gave him one mitten for Christmas but I mean I guess he could have kept one hand really warm and used the other to like text I don't know so um yeah and then this was going really well I think it was the right one that I hadn't done and then I used the wrong size needles for like the whole palm of the mitten and didn't realize it until I had already knit it and it was not fitting the same and then I realized what had happened and I had to rip apart the whole thing and redo all of this color work here and all of this that was not fun the frogging part was not fun it wasn't so bad to re-knit it but yeah so this was definitely process or product definitely a product knit because of the meme and we're big Bernie fans, so my husband just, yeah, he's really thrilled to have these. The process was still pretty fun to knit. I a little bit, though, had, you know how second sock syndrome is a thing? There was a little bit of second mitten syndrome. It did take me a few weeks after Christmas to actually cast it on and get it going again. I felt very accomplished for having done the first mitten, which went pretty quickly, but then the idea of having to do the whole second one, just, I don't know, I wasn't as excited about having to do it. But he has them now, he loves them. These things hopefully are going to last a long time. They're like the warmest things ever. And my husband is very knit worthy. And so I was very glad to do this for him. So that was the next thing that I had finished. And this is gonna be a really long video. I didn't realize that. That's okay. You guys have a drink, right? You've got knitting. You guys can knit. All right, so then the next thing that I finished was these two at a time socks. So this was a process knit. The story with these socks was that I had a sock blank that was sitting in my stash forever and I had cast on the socks right around Valentine's Day a year ago, so 2021, and I never got beyond the cuff. I didn't even finish the cuff. I think I did like half of the cuff and then I never picked it up again and they just sat and sat and sat. So I made it my mission to get these done. I don't think it happened by Valentine's Day. No, it didn't. These happened about five days after. It says that I finished these on February 19th. So I was working on them over Valentine's Day. These have a little, the sock blank had all kinds of hearts all over it. And these have a heart cable pattern on them, which I know you can't see, but that's okay. I had a two at a time sock book and the way that the sock blank was is that it was two strands in the sock blank that you were supposed to knit at the same time to have two identical socks and I had never done two at a time socks before so I think for some reason I don't know I cast them on and then just because when I knit my socks I tend to make vanilla socks out of my self-striping yarn they're kind of mindless for me I have knit cable socks, but I don't, I haven't done it like that much. 
most of the time if I'm knitting socks it's just my mindless knitting project and I'm not actually following a pattern so I think that that had something to do with it plus I had to figure out the whole two at a time knitting thing and in the end I really like these socks and I'm really really glad that I pushed through and finished them because they are adorable and now I know that knitting socks two at a time is not such a big deal it gets a little tangly at first so I had to kind of figure out a system to keep things from tangling but once I got beyond a certain point that wasn't happening so much so that was definitely a process knit so that I could learn and get comfortable with a new technique and I love the product all right, one more finished object to show you guys. And that is my junction sweater. So this is my most recently finished object. I just finished this one on March 19th. So this has just been off the needles for a few weeks. I have only worn it once. I should put it on again. This is my favorite thing. I love this sweater so much. And I, I used my hand spun for this. This was both process and a product knit. I wanted the finished product. Thought the junction sweater, I always thought it was a really, really cute pattern. And when I had my hand spun, I was searching for patterns that would show off my hand spun. That wasn't just like a hat or a pair of mittens or something. I wanted to use it in a sweater, but I didn't have enough of it to use in like a full, all, you know, I had to pair it with something else. And so I found this and this was an absolute joy to knit. This was really my first brioche project. I had only done the technique once before and only a little bit on some cuffs for Owen's sweater. Um, so there was just, there was a lot of fun techniques, like the way that she did the neckline the collar was really clever and that was fun to knit and then the brioche was really fun to knit and then this flea stitch was super fun and engaging to knit too it made knitting the body um you know it was it was a step up from stockinette there was the color work involved but it was still just just knitting and you weren't using two colors in every single row. So it was very engaging and it was a joy to work on. So this one also hadn't been lingering for very long. I was working on creating the yarn. My hand spun pretty much all of last spring and the summer. I think I finished the hand spun early fall and then I was, it took a couple of weeks of me like searching for the perfect project. So I think I cast this on maybe in October. So it wasn't, it wasn't lingering for very long at all. And now it is finished. And that concludes my finished objects segment of this video. Now we've got some other things to talk about. Let's take a quick break. Okay, so you guys just saw the six things that I crossed off of my lingering whips list. So six of my 11 have turned into finished objects or five and a half. I mean, there's that one that's in the naughty corner, but we're not gonna talk about that one anymore on this podcast today. So I still have Five. So, I mean, you know, five out of 11 to still go. I'm halfway through this list, slightly more. And that feels like three months of knitting and to have gotten halfway through my list feels amazing. Um, two of the two of the five you guys have seen me working on, um, but I wanted to talk about those. So... And plus, I really only have four because one of them is going to get frogged. Maybe I'll pull that one out first. So this project right here is a project that I'm going to frog because this was actually my first um, 
my first naturally dyed yarn ever, which I did with Red Cabbage, which is not color fast. And um, it's really pretty. It's like this beautiful purple. But if I expose this to the light and probably frequent washing, it is going to fade. And I, it's not that I'm not okay with that, but this would just be better used for a garment that's going to stay indoors, like maybe a pillowcase or a blanket, something like that, that I'm not going to need to wash very frequently. And that also isn't going to be seeing a lot of sunlight. And so the project that I had cast on with it um, was called the Full Circle Cowl. And this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. It's a gorgeous pattern, but you guys are going to see right away why I dislike it. The dye lots. Guys, I, I mean, I dyed it in the same dye bath, but different, different, um, exhaust. What is it called? Why am I losing my mind? So I reused the same dye bath multiple times. <laughs> and so obviously this one got less color than this one did. And this one probably is also a bit darker. The color is really, really pretty, but I did not alternate skeins. And just, so this is a cowl. It's, it's actually, this one in particular is gorgeous. It's kind of like a variegated blue and purple. It's so pretty. But I mean, there's just such an obvious difference in color that, I don't know, I was working on this in my basement where the light is not great and I didn't notice it at the time, but it's so obvious. So I love the pattern. This also being my very first natural dye experiment, it's just on some Patton's classic wool, I think is what I used. And it's, it's not the softest wool and for something that is supposed to be sitting on my neck, I thought for me, probably it would be a bit too itchy. So I am going to frog this one. I do like the pattern. So I've been considering knitting it up in a different, much softer, more consistent yarn. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is definitely the one project that is designated for the frog pond. I just haven't put it there yet. I mean, it's it's there. I just haven't frogged it yet because I've not been, I just haven't been in a rush to sit there and rip it all out. So I've got a couple other projects that I'm gathering up and I'll probably film another video to show you guys because you guys have never seen a few of those things before because they are definitely pre-podcasting UFOs that are going to be frogged. So I think that'll be kind of a fun video to show you some things that are just never going to get finished um, before I rip them all out. So yeah, I'm kind of probably going to just have a day where I just kind of rip everything out. And so this is being just set aside for that day. But this one is definitely not going to get finished. So that leaves me four whips on my list and all of these are going to get finished. All right, so this one I have been working on, but I have hit another wall with it. I have shown this to you guys a lot in recent episodes. This is my Artist's Journey sweater, and it is gorgeous. This one definitely is a product knit for me. I saw this and wanted the sweater in my wardrobe. And so I told Danny I would test knit it for her. And as you can see, I didn't finish it. What I didn't realize at the time was that this is a big project. And I'm okay with a big project, but I was working also on another test for her at the same time as this, which did get finished. and. I don't know, I wanna say this was like February, March of last year, maybe even April, and I just didn't finish it. 
I had gotten not even like the whole back wasn't done. So I have come quite a way. I've come quite a way with this sweater since I talked about it on my video. Um, the shoulders weren't even yet seamed together. So I think when I showed this initially as a lingering whip, the front was done and most of the back was done, but only like I still had to do like a whole shoulder part of the back and seam the shoulders together. So I have since in the last couple of months, I have finished the back. I have seamed both shoulders together and I have knit an entire sleeve. That was a lot of work. I have also started the second sleeve and so what is my problem with this sweater then? I love the design. I love the yarn. It's just a very slow knit. And I've already talked about how the process of knitting these twisted stitches with a one, one by one twist cable is just so slow. I just have run out of steam on this again. I am going to finish this sweater, but I did not meet my goal of finishing this by of finishing this by the end of March. That was my goal was to have this done by April 1st um, because I was hoping to wear it before the warm weather got here. And it still is a bit cold right now, but in order to accomplish that, I would have to spend probably a full week really just dedicating all of my knitting time to getting this sleeve done. And then I still have a neckband to do. Um, Honestly, I just don't have the mental capacity of focus that this particular pattern requires. The color work sections are really easy. The twisted, the, these are really easy too. It's just tediously slow. There's three color knitting in the color work sections on some of the rows, which is fine, but it is slow for me. And these, without the color work, is even slower than the color work sections. I don't know. I think when I agreed to do this as a test knit, I had no idea what a slow sweater this was gonna be for me. And there's just only so much of this kind of concentrated knitting that I can do at once and I need to have other projects to balance it out and I'm just I'm at that place with it where I am I'm really proud of how much more work I've put into it but now that now that we're in April after this next week I'm not going to be able to wear this it is not going to get cold enough to wear this sweater so I'm not feeling the sense of urgency to get it done. So I'm afraid that this is just gonna be lingering probably into the fall. Maybe not all the way into the fall, but I don't wanna put the pressure on myself to, to force myself to do it because when I'm forcing myself to do something and I'm not fully enjoying it, that it's just not as much fun and I don't have as much knitting time these days as I did before I started working full time. And so now that my knitting time is more limited, I'm also, um, you know, I'm also out of the house more. So I'm, I'm more tired when I am knitting. And so if I am feeling with it enough to knit in the evenings, it's not easy always for me to be like, I have the energy to work on this very complicated pattern. I tend to just want to pick up something much more low key. And so I've just decided with this one. Now, I definitely love this. I'm not frogging it. I'm going to finish this, but I am not going to force myself to do it in a specific time frame anymore. I made 
really great progress. I've got one of the two sleeves done, which took weeks to do this. And I just, you know, with spring coming, there are other things that I'm excited to be working on. I did cast on a new spring sweater, which I will be talking about in my next podcast. I'm really excited to just start something fresh, something more lightweight because we're in a different season now than we were when I was originally working on all of these whips in the winter. So I am okay with just when I feel like I have an hour and a half, because it takes me about an hour and a half to do one little cable section and also one little color work section. So when I feel like I have an hour and a half that I can really focus and I wanna pick this up, maybe I'll make another small dent in it. I've decided I'm not going to show this every time on the podcast unless I've made like significant progress on it um, because I just don't want my content to get stale you know so I think I'm just I'm gonna work on it gradually and this I will get done for the fall because now I see I can see the light at the end of the tunnel it's just that the tunnel now is heading into spring and I'm not gonna get to wear this anytime soon and I do have so many other projects that I really want to be spending the knitting time that I do have working on. So let me go show you some of those other projects because some of those are on my whips list too and I'm excited about them. All right, so that was, did I even say what this was? This is Artist's Journey by Annie Lupton. The next whip that I am actively working on right now, which I am really excited to get done, is my Modernist Cardi. And this is the, the inside view. I have finally finished the top portion of it. So this, I'm so excited about. This is a lightweight fingering yarn. So this is going to be a cardigan that is perfect for this like transitional, when, like going into spring we still have cool days and it's not too hot yet weather and so I have finally finished the um the top part of it and it yeah it's really cool I'm gonna be picking up I didn't do a gauge swatch I'm a little bit worried that it's gonna be a little more cropped than I originally envisioned it. No, maybe not. Maybe it's just the way that it's curling up because of the stock in it. I think that's what it is. Yeah, so I have finished the, the top half and I'm so excited about this one. This is definitely both process and product knit. I originally saw the sweater on Renee Callahan's Instagram. And she is East London Knits on Instagram, Renee Callahan. And I saw her wearing the sweater and I asked her what it was and she said it was the modernist Cardi. And then when I saw uh, Wonderland Yarns release their new Color Burst Yarn Colors, I remembered about this pattern because Renee used a similar kind of yarn in her sample knit. And I saw the color burst yarn and I said, that is what I'm gonna knit that cardigan out of. So I had already had the idea of wanting to knit that cardigan. And then when I saw this yarn, I just knew it was the perfect match. And the process of knitting this is so fun. Her construction of this is so unique and clever, and it's also a lot of stock in that. So, but it's not mindless because at least so far there have been so many short rows and shaping things to keep track of because of the way that she did the construction. So it's not a project that I am able to just pick up and just knit on without any thought. So it's not like a, a take with me project because I have to keep track of how many repeats I'm doing and how many short rows I'm doing and all of that kind of stuff. 
but it's not anywhere, doesn't require anywhere near as much concentration as the artist journey sweater that I just shared with you guys. And I am so excited to work on this one. This is what I have been spending a lot of my knitting time on. I have hit um, the point where I now need to pick up the stitches at the bottom. So I've got to pick up along the edge here and knit like the bottom half of the sweater. And I cannot do that yet because I cast on a new project. I have it right there, but I don't want to show it on this video. But I, I cast on a new project and the needle that I am using for the ribbing on the new project is the same needle that I need to use to do the next step of this sweater. So, but after another inch of ribbing, I will be switching needle sizes and then I will have that needle again and then I will be continuing on this cardigan. I just, I love this so much. So yeah, this, this is probably going to be my next finished object actually and not artist's journey as I originally thought and I am okay with that. I'm very excited for this one. Okay, so that leaves two projects, just two projects on my list to share with you guys. So speaking of cardigans, got one that I've not touched yet since I showed it to you guys in my video, but I really want to touch it very soon. And uh, it's all kinds of tangled up in here. Let me see. What yarn ball is this attached to? Is it? I don't even know. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Here it is. All right. Let me get organized here. This is so pretty. This yarn is so pretty. Oh, this is this is a thing that I want to get to because it's spring and the colors are so spring-like. Okay, now I've got this all sorted out. So, all right, two, two Marches ago, so two years ago, right before life shut down, I picked up the most gorgeous yarn at my local yarn shop. And this is Ba, Sonoma in the color yellow jacket and it is a grello with like all kinds of amazing speckles different shades of yellow. it is gorgeous it's like shades of gray shades of yellow so gorgeous so I picked up a sweaters quantity of this yarn and then I cast on it was another one like I had to I bought the yarn fell in love with the yarn and then I had to figure out what it was going to be. So in in May, I think it was May 2020, I cast on the All the Lights cardigan and I only got done, I mean this was a lot of work, but I only got done the shoulders basically. So this is the front. I can't put it on. I barely just joined for under the arm and so now I have to continue knitting the whole body. And I think I've shown this to you guys twice now in this state throughout like the life of this podcast. I still want to knit this cardigan. And now that it is spring and that this is such a fun spring color. I mean, this is gorgeous. This is another one where the pattern itself requires so much concentration that I have to be in the right headspace to knit on it. Um, which is another reason why I want to put the all, not the all the lights, that's this one, the artist journey aside for a little while because I just really want to pick this one up and I, I don't think I have it in me to work on both of these concurrently. I think it has to be kind of one or the other. And I'm just at a place where 
I got a lot of progress done on Artist Journey and I really want to make progress on this one now. I don't know if this is a design that I'm going to get finished this season or not because it is a massive amount of work, but I really want to get working on it again. There's, it's gorgeous. So this is the back. There's just so much going on. There's, there's braided cables. There's, I mean, there's cables. There's an Aran section. There's lace. There's bobbles. There's, it's gorgeous. So, but this is a lot of work. And I'm okay with a lot of work, but like, I just, I have to be in that, in that space to work on it. Um, this is also a DK weight yarn, but I don't think it's going to be as, as thick as the artist's journey because there's no, even though there's cables in it, there's no color work. So like there's no floats. So, but it's still going to be warm. So I don't know if, I don't know. I don't know when I'll wear it, if it's really like a spring cardigan or a fall cardigan, but the colors are screaming spring to me. And so that's why I want to work on it right now. This is really, this is, I think this one is a process knit. It, it, it's also a product knit, but like, I'm not, I'm not desperate to have this finished anytime soon. I really enjoy working on this one when I'm working on it because there's so many interesting things happening. Um, so, I mean, there's like a texture section there and then, I mean, this was so much work just to get to this point. And so I know it's going to take a really long time and I'm okay with that, but I just want to get working on it again. Um, I do want this as a finished product as well but yeah I think that for me this one is just the joy of of working on all of these different types of things all in one piece and I think that that's why Hohi Locatelli designed it like she put I think what she said was she put all of her favorite things all in one cardigan so yeah I don't know maybe it'll go more quickly than I think if I'm not, if I don't have like so many other projects that I'm working on, but yeah. So this one, I'm really eager to get back to. The other one that I showed you, I'm really eager to just set aside for a while. So I think that this one is going to be taking the place as like the thing that I'm doing my concentrated knitting on. So it's just so pretty. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and then there's one more thing that I have to show you guys. And it has not gotten any further attention. And I'm still planning on making it. I just don't, I don't know if I'm going to work on it now or if I'm going to wait until the fall. I might work on it now a little bit. This is the shift which is a cowl by Andrea Mowry. And I haven't worked on it any further, but this is what I have. From what I hear people say, it's a very quick knit. I, I just, I don't know, out of sight, out of mind, maybe. I love the colors. And I have been really enjoying having things to stick around my neck and keep me a little bit warmer. So I am actually very interested in getting this done. I'm just not sure if it's one that I am going to work on anytime soon or if I'm going to focus my energy more on some like casting on a couple of new things and just kind of doing this at some point. So not really feeling like picking this one up just yet, but I definitely am going to finish it because I think that the finished product will be something that I will really enjoy. So we'll see. Maybe I'll try working on it one of these days and maybe I'll just get into the rhythm of it. Um, but I'm just, I'm not feeling any kind of rush with this. This is something that will be just as good to have in the fall as it will in the spring. So I think I'm okay to just 
to just wait on it for a bit. I'm not like so, so desperate for the finished product that I'm feeling an urgency to get it finished. So I think, you know, when the mood hits me, I'll pick it up and I will work on it. And I'm just not there with it yet. But I do really like it. I'm using the same exact spin cycle colors that Andrea used for her design. And yeah, that was a lot, you guys. I mean, you guys are used to my videos being pretty long. Um, I have spinning updates also, but I just kind of wanted to focus this video on my knitting, on my knitting whips because I don't know, the, the spinning, I am definitely in a really good spinning place. I was actually spinning on two different fibers today, also that I showed in the lingering whips video. So I have got one of them here. The other one is in a different room, but I've got this one. And they're both really autumnal colors, so I'm just kind of still working my way through those. I, I do want to start spinning something that's not so autumnal, but autumn is my favorite season, so it's not really bothering me too much. I don't, because I'm making yarn right now and not a garment, it doesn't, I don't feel the same um, level of seasonality. I don't think that that's an actual word. It doesn't feel as big a deal to be working on, an, on spinning an autumn colorway as it does to be working on an autumn garment. Does that make sense? I'm not really explaining it well, but I mean, I would like to be, to be spinning a spring colorway, but I am also, I'm, you know, I'm making good progress with both of my fall colorway spinning projects right now that, you know, I'm just, I'm just going with it. I'm just spinning what I'm spinning and then, when I finish one, I'll just cast on a spring color cast on. I'll start spinning up a spring fiber, springy colors fiber, and yeah, I'll just go from there. So, I don't know, process or product knitter? Which one are you? Or are you both? Does it depend on the project like it does for me? Leave me a comment. I would love to know your thoughts on that. I am... I am very proud of, I mean, I worked half, halfway through my list of whips, right? And I just am really feeling that, like, I've been such a good girl and I've been working diligently on the things and, and resisting the urge to cast on new things. And I waited until April 1st. There were a couple things that I snuck in there, like a few pairs of socks a shawl sample that I made for Wonderland yarns and a couple of smaller test knits. But now I have no more deadlines, which feels amazing. I can just knit on whatever I want to knit on. Life is pretty busy because as I said, we are moving and I am in like the busiest part of my semester. But I've got about six more weeks of my job and then I'll be on summer break. So I'm going to have a lot more time to be podcasting and be working on my projects. And yeah, so just, just a lot happening right now. And it's, it's all really good things. Um, if the weather would just, you know, I mean, the April showers bring May flowers, right? So the rain is very necessary just kind of conflicted with my schedule this week. That's okay. I will be podcasting probably this weekend in a few days, and I will be sharing my new cast-ons because I have two new cast-ons to share with you guys. And so I'm looking forward to, to showing you guys some fresh new spring projects. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was long and different from my usual format, but I just really wanted to talk through everything so that I could process it better. I'm going through a lot of things now as we are getting stuff ready to move into our new apartment. And, you know, I'm just kind of touching a lot of the things and 
you know, figuring out what my plans are for knitting in the coming months. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of do an overview of where I am with all my whips, what I am willing to put aside and what I am eager to pick up and just catch you guys up on all of that. So there we go. If you guys enjoyed this video, I don't know if it's a little bit different, but if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. I don't do these kinds of videos very often, but it was, it was good to just review everything. I think the reason that I was resisting casting on new projects is because I already had this long list of whips that I wanted to work through. And I knew that if I just kept casting things on, the list wasn't gonna get dealt with. And so I feel like we're in a much, much more reasonable place with it where I'm excited with the projects that are left on it. I've got a couple that I'm really eager to be working on, a couple that I'm willing to wait on a little bit longer. So I've got, I've got two that I'm really eager about, which is a good number. And I've got, you know, one new sweater cast on. And I think that that's good. I think as long as I'm not casting on a million things, I'm not going to get so overwhelmed again. And I'm also not having a deadline knit project right now. I'm not taking on any more test knits. So I know that the knitting that I am taking on right now is all for myself and it's all things that I really want to be working on in the moment. And that feels like a big relief and it just feels really good. So thank you guys for joining me today. I hope that you guys got some knitting done because this was pretty chatty. Um, but yeah, I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week. I will be sitting down probably this weekend. If not Saturday, then on Monday, we're also supposed to have nice weather and I am off on Monday. So I am planning to film an actual real episode, like normal format for you guys in the next few days. So be on the lookout for another episode from me pretty soon and have a great day. I will see you guys not too long from now. Until next time, bye-bye.